what a blessing to be alive in 2024. Uh, we last met last year, yesterday, and here we are on a brand new day of 2024. Of course, we always put emphasis at the beginning of the year, but each new day is a new day that we have never had. But this is not only a new day, but it is also 2024. As Paul would put it, we are closer now to the coming of Christ than we were before. Uh, we are a year closer, we are a day closer. And may God usher you, may God um, pour his Holy Spirit, his blessings on you in this year. Um, and may we walk intimately closer to him than ever before. We don't pray for the year to bring us blessings. We pray for to God to bless us. We are not blessed by the year. And that we can occupy our position and do the best we can to be a blessing to others. God bless you and I wish you a happy new year and a, pro a prosperous one. God bless you. Um, let us pray before we um, read our text for today. Our kind and loving Father, thank you for the prayers that have been made, Lord, um, for the encouragement, Lord, to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. A lot could have happened, Lord, but here we are. But of course, there are those who are going through challenges, even as we speak. We pray for them, Lord. We pray that you may be closer to them. We know this is a world of pain and suffering. Uh, tomorrow, we will we may also be faced with this, but at this moment, Lord, we thank you for the window of opportunity to see and to love and to share the beauty of being alive. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to read again in Judges format. Before we do that, just one thought as a reminder of what we said. Thank you, Tulu, for recapping what we said yesterday. I know it. we uh, don't have enough time to really uh, make this thing so plain, but as I said yesterday, um, that uh, uh, Hannah's prayer for me just keeps amazing me. I've read and reread that story. Each time I read it, I feel like there's something we're really not getting here. There's something that God wanted us to hear. Um, when we pray to God, when we talk to God, there are certain principles, as I'm going to share with you another principle that helps us also uh, in, 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 in getting uh, or receiving the blessings God wants to give to us. There are laws in the physical world. If you jump, you will come down because there's a physical law. You can't jump and pray to God not to, not to come down, not to fall. Jumping uh, in the world where we uh, in maybe unless you are in the moon, the force of gravity will bring down. There are physical laws that are there that God has placed, but there are also spiritual laws in the spiritual realm that are there. And when we don't uh, um, um, take notice of those laws, or we're not even aware, it doesn't matter. We we struggle to 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 fall within the divine parameter and be able to receive God's blessings in His presence. I'm not saying that we. We have to know all those laws 100%. But there are laws like, for example, if you keep sin in your heart, that's a divine law. That's a kingdom principle. If you have sin, unconfessed sin in your heart, it doesn't matter whether you can pray and do till green. God will not hear your voice. God will not hear your prayer. I'm not talking about you having sinned and because we are sinners, we are not even aware. I'm talking about you keeping sin and you know there is this unconfessed sin. But you go to God not to confess sin, but to ask God to give you other things. Even if it may appear as if that prayer has been answered, I can promise you right now that it was not answered by God. That's a divine law. It's a law that's in the spiritual realm that uh, is like the force of gravity. And so um, I always like to see and understand those laws, not to pigeonhole God, confine him and say, this is how God, uh, this is the only way God will bless you. There are a hundred ways God will bless you. But there are certain principles. I like there in the book, Ellen G. White, Steps to Christ, uh, where she talks about the privilege of prayer. She gives about nine things, conditions for answered prayer. Uh, maybe one day we'll talk about those conditions for answered prayer. That if, you, if those conditions are not met, God will not. Your prayer will not be answered. Now, what I like about Hannah, as I mentioned yesterday, 
is that Hannah, beloved, amazing story. Hannah um, doesn't suspend her joy until her prayer is answered. She's praying to be remembered by God, but the moment she prayed and she got the confirmation from Eli that God has heard her prayer, she started rejoicing. She didn't rejoice the day she fell pregnant because her rejoicing, her joy was not in having a child. She wanted to be remembered when she was told and confirmed that the prayer has been heard. That's it. She was in the waiting room. Uh, she was not pregnant the first time she, 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 she prayed. She remained in the waiting room celebrating and happy and, and enjoying the presence of God. Having what uh, Paul says in 4, 4, 13 Philippians, the joy, the peace that passes understanding. Uh, symbolically, you may be in the waiting room, but you, your joy does not come from uh, being attended to, from being given what you want, but your joy comes uh, because you're connected to God. And I'm not saying we shouldn't pray for those things, we shouldn't pray for our children, but our joy mustn't wait until our children are, are out of drugs and then we start being happy. It also defeats our prayer. Our children who are in trouble and they know we're praying for them must see the answers of their prayers in us, see us being peaceful. Uh, there's a lot we can say on that. Now, today I want to... Um, just take your eyes to a, another beautiful story. Um, we don't say much about this, but it is used at times as a way of trying to make a point. Um, the story of Deborah. Deborah. I know others call the uh, pronounce the name as Deborah, uh, but I think the name is more like Deborah. Deborah, uh, according to uh, verse four of chapter four, the Bible says, "Now Deborah, a prophetess." the wife of Lapidoth. We may not even know Lapidoth. Others say uh, it was a woman from Lapidoth, commentators, but I think the, the husband's name was Lapidoth. We don't know the husband, but we know Deborah. The, the focus here is not on the couple. The focus is on Deborah, who was a prophetess. Now, the text I want to focus on before I give the, the preamble is found in verse 9. So she said, okay, verse 8 says, Barak said to Deborah, the prophetess, if you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. Um, this uh, was, uh, they were going to go to the war uh, with Sisera. And uh, Barak says, I want you, Deborah, to go with me. That's how much confident, that's how much confidence she, he placed on Deborah, that even as a woman, um, she, he wouldn't go to war without, without Deborah. Then verse 9 says, Deborah says, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. What a statement. What a statement. Now, before we, we tackle that statement, allow me to just say the few, few things about, about uh, Deborah or Deborah. Um, she was a prophetess, very, one of the very, very few prophetess in the, the text is Judges 4, verse, I think somebody was asleep, now she's, she's up, the text is Judges 4, verse 8 and 9, and those of us who have just joined us, that's the text, but the, the context is, of course, Judges 4 and 5, but the text is Judges 4, verse 8 and 9, with Barak asked, Deborah to accompany him to war with Sisera. In verse 7, it says, uh, the prophets, the prophecy from uh, Deborah was that, um, as God would say, I will deploy Sisera, the command of Jabin's army, Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude at the river Kishon, and I will deliver him into your hand. That was the prophecy. Uh, 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 um, and then um, uh, Barak would not go there if Deborah was not going to be with him. Now, now Deborah was one of the rare few uh, prophetess in, 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 in Israel. You remember Miriam was also called a, a prophetess. Hulda was also a prophetess. I mean, I mean in the Old Testament. Then you'll have Anna and others in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, we don't have, you can count up to what? Um, the fingers in your hand if you want to 
counting the number of prophets that were there. So it must have been something very exceptional for a woman to be a prophet. Not that there were no men. Men were there uh, who were always the prophet, the, the prophetess. But at this time, we hear about, about Deborah. Uh, but there's something very interesting about Deborah, who was the prophet. According to verse 4, uh, she was also a judge, a ruler, uh, sitting at the gate there and adjudicating and uh, dealing with issues uh, of abuse, uh, addressing grievances, administering justice, uh, making sure that controversies are solved, um, declaring the will of God. And the people, it says that, and people would come to a verse four, it says, and the children of Israel, not just children like children. When you say children of Israel, it means the people of Israel, men and women, young men and young women, all the children of Israel would come up to her for judgment, for advice, for the way forward. I've got this problem. How can you help me? I've got this challenge. I want to, I've got this prayer. She was there doing that work as a, as a, on a full-time basis as a prophet. Now, this is the only time there are judges in the book of Judges. I mean, Samuel was a judge. Many others, Gideon, also a judge. One of the famous judges, Samson was a judge. But this is the only time where the judge is mentioned by name to be a prophet. The title prophet is given to a judge. Samuel was also a prophet, a priest and a judge. Uh, but the, the, the name prophet is not used for Samuel and others, but for, 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 for Deborah, it's emphasized she was she was also a a prophet, and uh, so she was she was a judge. Not because she, um, uh, she, she, we call her a judge, but remember to be a judge you had to be a deliverer, and we're going to we're going to get to that because that's very important. What qualifies you as a judge? If you look at all the judges in the book of Judges. <laughs> is that you have to deliver Israel. You have to be involved in war. All of them in one way or the other, you have to be involved in war and deliver Israel. Because remember, when, when Israel during this period would move away from God, God would allow these other nations to oppress them. And then God will send a deliverer. And that deliverer fulfilled the role of a judge. And so the question then is commentators would ask, why is Huldah, sorry, why is um, Deborah listed amongst the prophets? Because she doesn't seem to have judged she doesn't seem to have delivered Israel. Right there in verse 8 and 9, what this is what would qualify her technically now as a judge. I wish I uh, um, can promise you, Deborah, that was not something that was in her head. I want to be a judge. All she was interested in was to doing was doing her work. Now, when Barak comes to her and says, Will you please come and join me so that we can go fight this in this war of Sisera? Uh, this was an opportunity now. For, for Deborah to be, a, to be counted as one of the deliverers. Let's put aside the fact that she was there sitting uh, at this place under the palm and, and giving advice and, and helping the Israel. But now she was given that, not technically, that would make her to be, to be recognized as the judge, if you please, a, a more like a promotion. And then, and then Barak says, here's a, Here's a, um, a proposition here. Uh, come join me, and, and so you can we can fight together. Uh, um, that, as I said earlier, on, that's how much confidence she was in the ministry and the presence and the influence of Deborah. That is Baraka, Barak. And then she says, and this is where the beauty is. This is where I want us to extract a lesson this morning. She says, um, nevertheless, I will join you. But my problem is there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking. In other words, God will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. God will destroy Sisera using my hand and he will not use your hand. Or in other words, you will not get the fame you want to get. And I want us to understand the word glory there. It's not like uh, when, when they were doing this thing, they wanted glory to themselves. No, no, no. By the word glory, I think it could, could also mean uh, you will not get the fame. You will not get the recognition. Because remember, judges are there to deliver people. So if I go with you, you will not get that fame. You will not get that recognition. And it, it, it's as if it's as if um, Deborah is saying, you must get the recognition. You must get the fame. 
Don't allow me to get the fame. And and and, and check. Uh, um, let's 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 check um, and pay attention, particular to to this expression. She's not saying no. I cannot join with you because if I join with you, we will not conquer Sisera. If I join you with you, Sisera will not be sold into our hands. He said no. God will do it. In other words, God can can actually work with me. He can work with me and will defeat Sisera. God can actually bring Sisera into my hand. But I don't want that to happen. He's not even saying God does not want that to happen. I, as a woman, I don't want that to happen. I want you to get the fame. I want you to get the glory, not the woman. So when you are asking me to go with you, you, you must be aware of that. Now, some would have said, no, 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 um, Deborah, get it. If she's asking you and God has no problem with that, why are you um, um, reluctant? Go get the fame. No, the principle here is esteem others better than yourself wish others the best, that which you would wish for yourself, wish it best to others. This is the divine principle, it's the kingdom principle, that all the blessings you wish God could give you, you must wish them for somebody else. I'm not saying don't wish them for yourself. You must wish those for somebody else. If you cannot wish that which you are praying for, for others, you make it difficult for God to give it to you. Here's the principle again. The principle is do to others what you want God to do to you. If you want God to help your child come out of drugs, you must be able to be concerned about another person's child who's in drugs and pray that God will deliver that child. Even those, though yours also is in, is in drugs and pray and say, Lord, deliver that child. Even if you were to be asked, should I start with yours or with that one? You should say, start with that one. So when you Focus your mind on, on praying blessings for somebody else. You are actually inviting God to bless you. The wish you have for someone, the good wish. You're not following me this morning. I know it's a it's a new, it's a new morning, and uh, we're trying to, to grapple with this. The wish you have for yourself, the wish you have for those you love, yourself, yourself should be the same that you have for others. If you don't have the same for others, you're making it difficult for God to fulfill that which you have for yourself. To make it easier, I'm not trying to speak for God. I'm not trying to say, this is how we, 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 can, we can manipulate God. I'm saying this is a kingdom principle. This is the divine principle. This is the condition for answered prayer. That which you want for others, this is what God will give to you and, and uh, will give to you. Of course, even, even when you do bad to others, you are actually asking God to do the same to you. When you enjoy doing God bad things to others, when you are praying for others to go through difficulties, you are actually saying, God, what I am praying for this person, I want you to do it for me. Your prayer for others is your prayer for yourself. When you pray for bad things for others, when you get hurt, when others are rejoicing, you are saying, Lord, please let me not get what I need. Uh, you are actually inviting. When you curse others, you are inviting curses into, into your own life. Now, I know others have said, no, but Pastor Papa, you are stretching this. Uh, they may say that you are stretching this because uh, um, she, she was a woman. That's why she said, uh, I cannot be part of a military campaign. I'm a woman. God does not allow a woman. Beloved, you may say that I don't have a problem, but all I read in that text is God would have honored my uh, um, Deborah's involvement in that war. She would have, he would have honored it. And uh, she, she doesn't say, she doesn't say it's wrong for me. It is sinful for me. He says, you will not get the glory. You will not get the fame. That's the reason. But we, we can, God will, but you will not get the fame. Now, now this was Deborah at her best. A prophetess, beloved, somebody who was recognized who now stands, if you please, for promotion, technically now to be the deliverer, says, no, I will. But what's going to happen is now you will not get the fame. Now, just to let you know that this is not just about gender. This is the character of this woman. In, 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 in chapter five, we, 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 we see the song of Deborah in chapter five. It's a beautiful song, start from verse one all the way to verse one. It's the song she composed. And that song, she sang it together with Barak. You know what? I've read that song right through up until the end. And I'm not going to comment on everything that's, that I see in the story. Of course, verse seven says, and it says, village life ceased. It ceased in Israel. In other words, Israel was under oppression. 
um, Israel's life was 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 in, in difficulty. And then it says, until I, Deborah, arose, arose a mother in in Israel. So she does recognize her role in in bringing a reprieve um, to Israel. But listen to what she says about Jahel. Now, if you want to know Jahel, um, you've got to read verse 17. When Sisera fled during the war, they were fighting with Barak. Uh, when Sisera fled, uh, running away, left the horse and ran away, uh, Jahel is that woman that actually invited him in. And in the end, Jahel um, killed Sisera. Sisera was killed by Jahel, the woman. Now listen now to, to you remember, remember uh, Deborah did not want to be involved and kill and kill and be part of, and, and, and have God deliver um, this man, Sisera into her hand. But now Jahel, the woman does that. Listen to what Deborah says in verse uh, 24 of chapter four. She says, most blessed among women is Jael, the wife of Heba, the Kenite. Blessed is she among women in tents. He asked for water. She gave milk. Now that he is, is Sisera. She, he asked for water. She gave milk. She bought out cream in a lordly bowl. She stressed her hand. She's telling the story how Jael killed Sisera. Sisera her right hand to the workman's hammer. She pounded Sisera, she pierced his head, she split and struck through his head, and her feet sank, he fell, he lay still. And so she's telling the story. Uh, the mother of, of Sisera was actually affected by that, but but that's that's another part. But what she's saying is that, he said, Jael is to be blessed, is a blessed woman among Israel. She, listen, she's a prophetess. She's doing something that was never done before. She's supposed to be collecting as much fame as possible, but she's sharing that fame. She says, Jael, for the work that she did, she's the most blessed woman in Israel. Now, that glory she spoke about, and says, uh, as, um, Barak, don't invite me to come fight with you. You will not get the fame. But now that fame is extended now to Jael, who actually uh, was in a place where she was able to kill Sisera. And, and she, he, she doesn't ignore that. If I were to write that song, I would not mention that because the more you mention the other's success, yours does not get noticed. But she mentions it and she says, Jael did this work and Jael is the most blessed woman in Israel. This is the Bora, beloved. This woman who did not just focus on herself. This woman who found joy in elevating others. This is the most powerful lesson that we can learn. In leadership today, in leadership today, where we men, especially in the church, are the ones leading, we lead, it's war right through, because you want to be the one who's, who gets glory. You speak evil of those who are in power. You get in power, you make sure whatever they were doing, it comes to an end, so that you will be known. When you come in, if there were good things done by the other, you'd stop them because people will recognize them. When you come into position, you make sure your name and only your name will be recognized. Others' names will be forgotten. That's what we do in leadership. But beloved, it doesn't end in leadership. It is how it is what regulates our relationship. You know what? Let me tell you something. It is one thing for, an, for a person who's inferior. It is one thing for a person who's not as blessed as others, to wish others the best. But when you occupy the same, when I have the same qualities, when I have the same education, the same qualification, and then the opportunity comes uh, for me to get the fame, and then I'm willing for that fame to go to others. It's, it's like, it's like uh, the case of David and Jonathan, if I could use that illustration. Uh, Jonathan was going to be the next in, in, in line as the king. I mean, there was nothing. He, he was the warrior. He had everything. But God chose David. And Jonathan actually made everything possible for David to become the king. He says, you will be the king. Not because he couldn't, he could have fought for that. He had the qualities, but this is the person that God had chosen. There is nothing as hurting as when you know you can do the work and God chooses somebody else. You don't want that person to make it. You don't want him to prosper because you know in your heart you could do the job. But for, when you know you are qualified for something and then somebody does it, and for you to wish that somebody the best, it shows 
that you are actually connected in a very intimate way with God. Let me tell you what, what, what neuroscientist says, what neuroscience says. If you have thoughts in your mind, negative thoughts, toxic thoughts, you are sabotaging your own life. You are sabotaging your own progress. When you have a toxic thoughts, when you keep thoughts, because the moment you start thinking about uh, the fact that I don't want this person to get the fame, you will start now making that to be materialized, to be realized. In other words, you start making the prayer in your mind for, for that person not to succeed. Even though you are not verbalizing that prayer, that prayer is forming in your brain. It is changing your brain. Your mind is informing your brain to keep this thing and to enlarge your brain around that point. That is why when you hear that something bad has happened, then you say, how is that so? But inside your heart, you are celebrating. Now, if you are celebrating because something bad has happened, and the devil is responsible for that in your celebration, which means you and the devil were connected. That's why you are happy now that bad things are happening to that person. Now, now here's the point. If you are connected with the devil and you are praying for God to bless you, how is he going to bless you? How does God bless you when you are wishing bad for others? When you are actually connected with the devil, making sure that their desires are not fulfilled and you want God to bless you. When you entertain these thoughts, you are sabotaging your mind. You are actually asking God not to bless you. You are actually saying, I don't need the blessings because I don't want that person to be blessed. But when you have positive thoughts in your mind, as the man thinketh, so is he. When you have positive thoughts, you know what? The spirit that God has given us is not the spirit of fear. The reason why you, are, you don't want this person to succeed, you are afraid. You are afraid that you may not be recognized. You are afraid that you may not get the fame. You are afraid that people may not actually see who you are. You are afraid that you may not get the recognition that is there. You are afraid, but God has not given the spirit of fear. He has given the spirit of love, beloved, the spirit of power and of sound mind. When those gifts that God has given us and we use you, we exploit those for his glory and for the happiness of others. God blesses us by, by wishing others blessings. You are opening avenues for God to bless you as we begin this year. Instead of having yourself as number one in the list of the blessings, can you put others there and see what God is going to do to you? Can you work with God and cooperate with God as he blesses others and say, Lord, bless them so that when you hear that they have been blessed, you can celebrate. That's the reason why it is difficult for God to bless you when you have an enmity against somebody else. Let me tell you, when you have an enemy, when somebody is your enemy, I'm talking about an enemy that it occupies your mind without paying rent, it's difficult for you to pray. Let me say that again. It is difficult to pray when you are angry at someone. When a wife does not speak to the husband, she's angry. You cannot pray. You can't pray. In other words, as long as you cannot pray, you cannot receive God's blessings. Having these toxic thoughts prevents you from praying. It prevents, it actually blocks the channel. So that God does not want to bless you. You block the channel. You sabotage your own spiritual survivor. May God help us. Let's learn the story from Deborah powerful woman, not because she got all this, but she wished others, Baraka, Jahel. This is the woman who was so good. One of the few, in actually the only one in the Jewish history to have served as a ruler, sitting there and adjudicating the only one in Jewish history, not just in the Bible, in Jewish history. But this woman was willing to have the fame given to others. She was not going out for fame. And because of that, today we study and talk about Deborah. May God bless you this morning. That's my prayer. And keep this in heart. And may God bless you as you wish others to be blessed. Let's pray. Our, our kind and loving Father, right now, dear Father, we have a list of all the things we want. But I've seen, even in the prayer request, people praying for others. I've seen people in the prayer rooms waking up early, to pray for others, to pray for their friends, to intercede for their friends. And that always is a touching experience. They themselves have problems. But right now, what keeps them awake is what is happening to the person next door. It is what is happening to their colleagues, what is happening uh, to somebody else other than them. And they are praying for this. Lord, this is powerful. Keep this in our minds. May we be the ones who rejoices as we see others being blessed, even though symbolically, Proverbially, we may be in the waiting room. When we 
look through the window and hear that somebody is rejoicing. She's shouting because the Lord has come through for her. Let us also rejoice, dear Father, and get out of that waiting room and go and join with that person and rejoice. Because as we do that, we are opening the avenue and making sure that the Lord will bless us also. But but see what how this affects us when we are rejoicing now because of somebody else who is, whose prayer has been answered. It's as if ours has been answered already. That even multiplies our own joy. Bless us as we begin this new year. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.